All right, I think we're at a good place now. So we'll get started. Good afternoon and welcome to Business Behind the Scenes. As I mentioned, I'm Brenda Lewis, Senior Member Relations Manager at the Tulsa Regional Chamber, and I'm pleased to welcome you all today. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize our generous sponsors who make events like this possible. Our Business Behind the Scenes sponsors are Exceptional Leaders Lab, who is represented today by Tracy Spears, and M&M Lumber. Our small business benefactors are Exceptional Leaders Lab, Security Bank, and Southwestern Payroll. Uh, Southwestern Payroll, pardon me, and Web Branding. And our small business supporting sponsors are Integrated Business Technologies and TEDC Creative Capital. Again, I'd like to thank these sponsors for their generous support. Speaking of sponsors, we have one, one of our wonderful sponsors and benefactors with us today, Tracy Spears with Exceptional Leaders Lab. Tracy, I'll now turn it over to you for a few words. Listen, I don't want to stand in the way of uh, our time with Heather, but I want to just say uh, how excited we are to be part of uh, this program. And it's been, we've created a lot of friends over this last year, for sure. We've all been rolling our sleeves up trying to navigate a new normal. And so uh, I'm anxious to hear how Heather can help us with our marketing of that new normal here in a little bit. So Exceptional Leaders Lab, we are an online, a, a virtual leadership training company. We provide executive coaching, strategic planning. Um, we do everything we used to do when we would go to your business, we're doing online, online now. So have a, an amazing team of partners um, in Nancy Gunter, Jane Mudgett, uh, locally Jackie Cleary, Leonel Thompson, and a big shout out to Melissa Siemens, who is uh, our director of client relations and also to Rosemary Harris, who helps with our marketing. So listen, uh, I'm not gonna spend any more time than that, but if you're looking for executive coaching, leadership training, team building, goal setting, anything coming in to the new year, uh, I hope you'll check us out at exceptionalleaderslab.com. You'll also find a new online course there. So uh, we took all of our greatest hits and, and, and you know compacted it into about an hour. And so you can very quickly really, I think, get a deep dive into some of the tried and true tactics for leadership. So with that, I think I turn it back over to Brenda and just say thank you for letting us be part of it today. No, thank you, Tracy, for not only joining us, but for supporting the Chamber and the Small Business Connection. Thank you. Um, I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Heather Berryhill, founding principal and CEO of Chatter Marketing. Heather has more than 25 years experience in marketing and as an entrepreneur has built her own bustling creative firm. Chatter Marketing is a full service firm specializing in advertising, marketing, public relations, digital marketing, branding, and social media, man social media management for businesses in Tulsa and throughout the U.S. Heather, I'll now pass it over to you. Thank you, Brenda. I'm so excited to be here today. I do have to say this is a first for me um, to present on Zoom, but hey, uh, it's COVID, right? So here we are. So today I'm just going to kind of go into a little bit of uh, just a little bit of background on me because I think it kind of sets up my um, career journey and how I got started with my business and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about our company services and maybe a few tips for you and your business and um, today it's going to be really centered around digital marketing so that's kind of the hot the hot topic these days in the marketing world um, and then maybe at the end I'm going to talk about how we pivoted during COVID so um, so let me just kind of go way, way back and I'll tell you a little bit about um, myself and chatter marketing. So um, I was born in Louisiana, um, moved to Dallas when I was three years old. I put myself through college. I graduated from Texas Tech University in 1994. Yes, I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, I have a degree in mass communications and public relations. Um, but my career journey really began after graduation. So I took a job after graduation in Amarillo, Texas, uh, for a company called Hastings Books, Music, and Video. Does anybody remember Hastings out there? So Hastings was kind of like a blockbuster, if you don't remember. They had, you know, books, music, and video um, that they sold to their patrons. Um, so I started there. I worked in the corporate office, and I was in the PR department. So loved my job so, so much. First week on the job, I think I met Garth Brooks, Kenny Chesney, Dolly Parton, Ty Herndon, and of course, Fabio. 
know who Fabio is? Yeah. So um, I, I loved my job. It was just the coolest place. We'd be sitting at our desk one day and over the intercom, somebody would come on and say, hey, meet us in the cafeteria. And you'd walk in and there's Kenny Chesney with a guitar. And it was just a crazy job. Loved it as, you know, as a single girl, a lot of young people working in that organization. And it was just a, a great place to work. However, I learned um, really quickly that um, Amarillo, Texas was probably not going to be the place for me. Nothing against people that love Amarillo. It just wasn't for me. I was a big city girl and I really um, knew at that point that I wanted to go back to Dallas. So I um, decided to go back to Dallas, but before I made that transition, I decided to uh, go on a cruise with a bunch of my girlfriends. And while I was there, um, I met my husband on a cruise, crazy. So there's a long story there. If we wanna go have drinks sometime, I'll tell you about it, but it's kind of funny. Um, but uh, I met my husband, I went on, went on back to Dallas. Um, uh, he was a Tulsa boy, born and raised. You know, he had his feet firmly planted in Oklahoma. And um, um, as we dated and decided to get married, you know, I learned pretty quickly that my Tulsa boy, ex-OU football player was not going to leave Oklahoma. And honestly, I've never stepped foot in the state of Oklahoma until I met him. I know that's crazy, Texas girl. So, but anyway, um, let's go back to Dallas. So after I left Amarillo, I moved to Dallas and started working for um, just a small marketing firm there. It was um, a company called Market Tech Associates. I'm telling you this story because this is where I met my first mentor. Um, his name was Brian Moran. He kind of looked like a cross between a um, Kenny Rogers and Santa Claus. <laughs> he, was, he was a good looking older man. This man could sell anything. I mean, he was definitely, I mean, God put him on this earth to be a marketing person. He was just fantastic at it. Um, he really taught me uh, what I learned there was was how to, I was the PR director there. So he taught me how to sell the story. So we had clients that, you know, I would write a press release on and I had to pitch that story to the media. So he really taught me how to pitch that story, how to sell it and also how to value the time of the journalist. So that was something I've learned along the way. And he really taught me that, and this was really important and I think it made a big difference in who I am today, but he taught me how to um, ask for what I want. So, and what I mean by that, and I'll give you an example. So I'd been with Market Tech for about a year and I, I thought I deserved a raise. I was working really hard and, um, you know, staying after hours and going above and beyond. And um, I really wanted a raise. And so he said, you know, if you want a raise, let, you know, give me a proposal. Tell me why you deserve this raise. So I went back and, and um, basically put a PowerPoint presentation together of why I deserved a raise. In a nutshell, he was gonna give me the raise anyway, I got it, but he just taught me that I need to go, I need to go after what I want. And so that was really a pivotal moment for me as a young career woman to just, you know, at, go after what you want, ask for what you want. So that's, that's number one, so okay. After Dallas, husband and I, just, or fiance and I decided we're getting married and I'm moving to Tulsa and I came a little bit kicking and screaming, I'll be honest. And again, big city girl, not that Tulsa is small, but I'm from Dallas, right? And so um, I, I came though. And, and, you know, when I first moved here, Tulsa didn't have a whole lot. I mean, it was, it was a long time ago. I think we had an Applebee's, a Bennigan's. Uh, the restaurant scene wasn't all that cool yet. Um, shopping, don't I won't even go there. So I kind of came in and just like, oh, I wish this place had more to offer. And I'm don't throw darts at me yet because I'm going to get to um, the fact how much I love Tulsa today. And so we'll get to that in a second. But so I came to Tulsa. My first job here was at another small ad agency called Phillips and Johnson. You guys have probably all heard of it. Um, I was there for about a year, and then I met my second mentor. So my second mentor was a man by the name of Terry Still. Um, he had a firm with a partner, I believe at the time it was called Humphrey Still and Associates. 
I don't know if you all remember that. Um, I didn't go work for that company, but he had a partner and they were doing business together and they both decided for various reasons to kind of go their own separate ways and, and have their own agencies. So Terry was fairly new with starting his new agency and he um, kind of um, talked me into coming to work there. I was a little reluctant because it was um, very small. It was him and another graphic designer, but I also saw opportunity there that, you know, it's a small agency. I, I thought it was exciting to kind of help it grow. So I, I went to work for Centerpoint Marketing. Um, I don't even know the year, I guess 1998, seven, something like that. Again, I'm aging myself. Um, so I was really, actually really happy there. I was an account executive, um, was there for, oh, about two and a half years. I had already gotten married um, and I um, had my first child. So in 2000, my daughter Madison was born and you know, I continued to work. Terry was kind enough to um, let me work Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then I could work Thursday and Friday at home so that I could be with her which was fabulous. It just kind of enabled me to kind of have my career and also, um, you know, stay home with my daughter. So fast forward 14 months later, my daughter's 14 months old and, and my, uh, I decided, you know, I really just want to stay home with my child. So I went back to my boss and said, hey, here's what I'm thinking. He goes, hey, go do that. Go home and be with your daughter. But go home and work and be with your daughter. So he let me basically stay home full time. I mean, who gets that kind of opportunity, right? I mean, it just was, it was beautiful. And I was able to still have my career, raise my baby. And um, it just, it meant everything to me. So um, I, I loved Terry, like he was um, a father and he was just really, really good to me. Another great mentor. I can still hear his voice in my head. I'm correcting my grammar in my PR press releases as, you know, I hear his voice all the time as I'm writing even to this day. So let's just say that, you know, 14 and 2000 and let's see, 2001, I started working from home. And then um, my husband would come along every now and then say, you know, you can really do this on your own. And, you know, I knew that, you know, I, I could do it on my own, but I still had a small child at home. And by then I had my second child. I had a son, uh, Grayson, who's now 17. So my daughter's 20, my son is 17. Um, and then um, as we're going along, I'm, I'm still working for the agency. I'm the main account executive for a large um, senior housing firm and um, just loved what I, what I was doing. Things were great. And then tragically, um, I can't remember what year it was, but Terry's 19-year-old um, daughter passed away suddenly with an aneurysm. It was horrible. Um, and as you can imagine, Terry was just really never the same after that. If you have children, you, you understand. And at that point, you know, I still can hear my husband saying, you could do this on your own, but at the same time, I, I couldn't leave him. Um, he really needed me to help run his business. And um, I was good at what I did. And you know, I have my two small children that I was able to, I mean, I had the best of both worlds. Why in the hell would I want to go start my own company, right? So, um, you know, and just really, it was out of loyalty to him. Again, he was like a father to me and then, when his daughter passed, I almost felt, feel like I became sort of a daughter to him. So it's just kind of a sad story. I don't mean to get everybody choked up, but it meant a lot to me as, as an individual and as an employee and as a friend and as, a, um, as a, another daughter, I guess you would say. So anyway, um, let's move forward. November 2012, um, unfortunately, my boss, Terry, passed away with very suddenly and tragically with the same sort of thing that his daughter passed with. So I was devastated, his family is devastated, um, but it was, it was just, it was a crazy time. Um, in, all in all, Terry and I worked together for about 15 years. So really long relationship there. And, you know, 
I probably, I don't know where I would be today if he were still here and um, the ad agency were still around, maybe I would still be doing that or maybe we would be partners. I don't know. I'm not sure what would have happened there. And sometimes I think about that, but you know, I stayed with him for a really long time, loved him so much and just was so sad when he passed. But um, after that, um, so that was in November, 2012, and I knew it was time after that. I, I had to make some decisions. So um, in January of 2013, so seven years ago, Chatter Marketing was born. So I, I pivoted really, really quickly um, from that just to kind of spin off and, and kind of do my own thing. So in a nutshell, my two mentors kind of helped me get to where I am today. And I, I really firmly believe that nobody does anything alone. I really firmly believe that you are not successful without the help of others. And it sometimes, you know, it takes a village to get you to be a, um, a successful business person. So there's that story. So let's move, move forward to uh, chatter marketing, kind of who we are. So um, we are basically a full service advertising, marketing, and branding agency. So if it has anything to do with marketing your business, I hate the term one-stop shop. I don't know why I keep saying I hate it because I use it all the time, but, but it's true. We are a one-stop shop. We do everything from a marketing standpoint for your business. So what does that mean? Um, we do website design, logo development, video production, printed collateral, we can do signage for your business and your building. Um, but in the last couple of years, I would say probably three years now, we have really gotten heavily into digital marketing. So what is digital marketing? It's a, it's a big term. Some people know what it is, some people don't. So I'm just gonna briefly go through what, what we do from a digital standpoint. So the, I would say search engine marketing or pay-per-click advertising You've heard of Google AdWords, you know, those little ads that appear at the top of a Google search. Um, so say you're searching for um, roofing Tulsa. So if you are doing pay-per-click ads, your ads are going to appear at the top of the page because most people don't go past page one, maybe page two, rarely, um, when they're searching for something. So you want to be at the top. And there's a whole strategy on being at the top. And we kind of help clients with those strategies. Um, the second thing I would say from a digital standpoint we do is search engine optimization or SEO. So that is kind of how you get um, on page one of an organic keyword search term without having to pay for it. So it's back end things that you do on your website to help your website pop up closer to page, the top of the page on a keyword search. Um, we also do YouTube advertising, geofencing, geotargeting, um, OTT or over the top advertising, which is used with a lot of streaming. Um, we help organizations with reputation and reviews management. And we also um, do Google My Business citation optimization. I'm probably speaking Chinese to a lot of you, but um, there's, these all mean something to us and they sh it should mean something to your business as well. Um, but we also, um, one of the big parts of social media, um, of um, digital marketing that we do is social media management. So I would say that 90% of our clients use our digital services along with um, traditional marketing tactics. So I, I constantly tell our clients that really a successful marketing um, campaign or strategy really involves many pieces of the puzzle. It's not just one thing you can throw out there and it's just gonna instantly bring leads to your business or new customers. Um, it's a puzzle and all of those pieces of the puzzle really need to fit together to have a, a really successful marketing strategy. So you can kind of look at maybe the stock market. I mean, are you gonna put all of your, um, your dollars into one stock? No, the best thing to do is to be diversified. Well, marketing is the same way. You really need to be diversified in your marketing efforts with traditional efforts, digital efforts, all of those things to make that puzzle kind of work together. So um, what do I love about digital marketing? I would say the number one thing that I love about digital is that it's 100% trackable. So how many of you for your business have, I don't know, placed a 
TV ad. And at the end of six months, you're trying to figure out, okay, how successful was my campaign on TV? Um, if, unless you put like a tracking number or a tracking website, there's really no way to track the success of that campaign. But with digital marketing, 100% trackable. I love this for our clients because it gives them peace of mind that they're, the budgets they're investing are, are working for them. But we really love it as an agency too, because no longer do I go into a client meeting and have to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I tell them that what we're doing is right? It, it's in black and white. The numbers are there. They don't lie. So, um, you know, no longer do clients um, question the success of our campaign. So the numbers are clear. And we do have, you know, dashboards that we can kind of pull up on a whim to, to show clients, you know, in black and white that it's really there. So um, really from a digital standpoint, a lot of that is, is what we do. And then um, social media is a big part of that. But we do get a lot of clients that wonder, if, you know, ask us all the time, you know, is social media, media really a resourceful tool for my business? Um, and a lot of, we get a lot of, you know, back and forth with that. So a lot of our clients um, basically think that, oh, I'm not going to get any leads from social media. And really what we try to tell clients is that it's just another form of branding um, for your business. If you're looking for social media to immediately, you know, give you all of the customers that you're searching for, you're probably not going to find it. But remember that I talked about the pieces of the puzzle. Um, social media is just one little piece of that puzzle that you, you've got to put into place. and You have to be there. Let me repeat that. You have to be on social media for your business. It's just all about strategy and how you use it. So the way I also, you know, tell clients, people are going to go to your website to find out what you offer, what your services are, what your, what your company does. But then they're going to go, after they go there, they're going to go to your social media channels. Hopefully you're putting your social media links on your website so they can find you easily that way from your website. But they're going to go to your website, learn about what you do, and then they're going to click on your social media links to find out who you are on the inside. So social media is really meant for that, to sell who you are on the inside. It's a great place to put your customer testimonials, um, talk about your staff, maybe milestones you've reached, um, cutting edge products and services that you've just come out with that you want maybe your social media followers to be able to talk about. Um, or to see before it's actually mentioned, whatever you want to use it for. But it's also a great place to use video. We use a ton, we do a ton of, di ugh, can't talk, ton of video production um, at Chatter Marketing. So we use videos on the client's website. We also use um, videos on um, their social media platforms. And it's just a, another way um, to reach clients that, that is more of a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so basically, if you're on the fence about incorporating social media into your business, you really need to think about it as, as a really powerful tool. So, okay, let me go back. I'm not trying to get political on you. The last thing in the world I want to talk about is politics right now. I'm sick of it. I don't even want to think about it. But um, think about the pivotal role that social media had on helping Trump win in 2016. And now think about the role that it is playing in all the controversy surrounded around the election right now. So there is no doubt that social media is a, an extremely powerful tool. Do I think things need to be changed um, from the way we use it, especially for politics? Absolutely. But for business, it's, it's just a great tool that you really need to um, take advantage of. And it's, it's extremely powerful when used in the correct way. So let's kind of talk about a couple of the bigs. Everybody knows the bigs. Facebook is number one. Instagram is number two. Facebook owns Instagram, if you don't know that. Um, and Google owns YouTube, if you don't know that. So going back, uh, Facebook started about 16 years ago. Can you believe it's been that long? It's crazy. Um, Instagram is about 10 years old. Facebook, of course, still number one on social media. Instagram, um, let's see, Facebook has 1.69 billion, with a B, users just in the U.S. 
and 2.7 billion worldwide. That's huge. A billion people use Instagram every single month and 500 million use stories every single day. So think about the audience that is out there that, that you have the, the potential to connect with. Um, so here's what kind of happened starting at the beginning of this year. Um, for example, Research is one of our clients. We manage all of their social media. And they um, kind of started coming to us and asking about um, influencers. So if you are on Instagram and you watch stories, you know what an influencer is. And um, so research kind of came and said, you know, I think we need, to, we need to start working with some influencers to really talk and maybe talk about recipes or, you know, to give our customers just more ideas for meals and what to cook for their families. Um, and so that kind of started our, our wheels turning. You know, as an agency, I would say we're experts in, in all social media platforms. We are great at posting and putting ads behind posts and on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of that. But from an Instagram influencer story standpoint, we weren't experts. And it's, it's a pretty new, um, new platform, I would say. You know, Instagram has been out, actually stories have been out for about 10 years, believe it or not. But they really didn't take off until probably about five years ago. But what we learned is that the power of influencer marketing is really moving the needle from a retail standpoint. So if you have a retail business, um, you might want to consider um, hooking up with, with um, influencers out there on social media. So once this ball kind of started getting turning, we started really researching it and connecting with a bunch of local um, influencers. And the, what we learned was you know, some of them charged quite a bit for their services. Some of them just wanted some merchandise. Some wanted a gift card, some wanted a contract, some didn't. It was just kind of all over the map. And I just, it got, you know, my, my wheels start turning. I'm just like, I don't understand how, it's not that hard. You're just getting on and talking about, you know, favorite eye concealer or whatever it is. Um, but um, so we sat down as a team and I kind of challenged my team we need to learn more. We need to figure out what it is. And if we're going to keep connecting influencers with our clients, we need to be compensated as an agency. So I looked at that as almost like another revenue um, realm for, for the company. Um, so what, <laughs> what I figured out from that is it's really, you know, our, our team didn't really know how to use Instagram stories either. We were posting to things, but we weren't really getting on there with a camera in our face and talking to an audience. So um, I decided to do it. <laughs> Crazy. I know. I'm 50 years old, or I will be in December. And I decided, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an influencer tomorrow. I'm going to try it out. I want to see... Um, I want to learn the machine of Instagram. I want to know, and what better way as an agency to learn? I'm not shy. I don't care. I'm going to get out there. I'm, I can act silly and, and do crazy things. And, and if it somehow could benefit the agency in the end, I'm in. So Heather started influencing. And if you want to follow me, it's up. just me, Heather B on Instagram. So don't laugh, but uh, my kids made fun of me for months and they still kind of make fun of me a little bit. That's okay. It's, it's all, it's all, a, it's a reason why I'm doing this. So I started it at the end of um, February. So what happened in March? COVID hit, right? So my platform and on your Instagram platforms, you're trying to kind of, um, you have to have something that you're passionate about that you talk about. So for me, it's cooking, entertaining and home decor. So I'm very passionate about all three of those things. I've been cooking my entire life. I love to cook. Um, I'm also very passionate about health and maybe not making all the recipes that I cook super unhealthy. <laughs> so um, that kind of became my platform. So here's where the turn of events came. So I'm learning the platform. I'm learning the machine of Instagram, how it works, how influencing works. And then COVID hits and everybody started cooking at home, right? 
So everybody's running out of ideas. The restaurants are closed. Well, not closed, but you could go and pick up takeout, but people were starting to cook at home more. So um, Reese's saw what I was doing on my Instagram channel and they said, hey, can you help produce some, some cooking videos for us? Because we really want to give our customers um, some, some cooking ideas of things and recipes that they can make at home. So I said, sure. So I think to this day, we've already, um, since COVID hit, we've produced 35 videos for Reese's. And basically it's my hands cooking on the recipe, but we take that video, we upload it to the Reese's website. And some of them, we um, do our digital marketing strategy where we put those videos on YouTube. People can watch them, click on them, takes them to the Reese's website where they can download their whole shopping for that, or all their groceries for that recipe from the Reese's website. So, so strange how just learning the power of Instagram and influencing turned into business for my agency that I really enjoy doing. Um, so then after that, Channel 6 started calling Reese's and saying, hey, can your chef come on and teach us how to teach our audience how to cook some new recipes? And they were like, well, I, we don't have a chef, but we have a Heather. <laughs> so I'm now on channel six every week cooking for Reese's and just me, Heather B. And it's just the craziest thing. But what, what it's turned into me, you know, it's a learning curve for my business. I can tell you anything and everything you want to know about the power of Instagram, the power of influencer marketing. And, you know, are, do I have millions of followers? No. And there's a whole nother story about that. But it takes time to grow organically. So if you're working with an ad agency that is helping with your social media marketing and you're saying, you know, why do I not have more followers? Why am I not growing? It, it takes a long time. And really, you want it to take a while because that is how you grow organically. If you grow too fast, a lot of those are bots, you know, that you're putting behind um, ads and certain, I'm not saying advertising on Facebook and Instagram is bad. You should definitely be doing that, but growing organically, sometimes without ads, it creates a stronger audience. Um, and you know, that's, it's kind of become just me. Heather B has kind of become a mission for me. I've had so many working mothers that are saying, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You've made my, I'm cooking at home more for my family and you've made it so much easier for me with ideas and things like that. So it's kind of cool. Like women helping other women, men too. You know, I'm helping people with their family time together, which makes me feel really good. So anyway, enough about uh, just me, Heather B and, <laughs> and Instagram. Um, so, you know, what I've learned as an agency owner is, you know, and as a business owner, and for all of you out there that own a small business, we, it doesn't matter what your business is. We're all going to experience bumps along the way when we got to figure it out. You just, you, know, you just pivot and turn and you figure out um, what you've got to do to just hang on. And I think those, especially now during COVID and all that's going on, it's a crazy election and um, you know, we're all worried about our businesses, but I think those companies and businesses that learn how to pivot and continue to learn something new every single day are going to be the businesses that are going to thrive. And honestly, I don't know about all of you out there, but I think 2021 is going to be amazing. It's going to, there's going to be some bumps along the way. I don't think it's going to happen until second quarter. Um, I don't know why I say that, but I just think that those that have hung on all this time and are really putting in the work every single day and learning something new and taking care of your customers and being honest and loyal. And I think those are the businesses that are really going to strive and be stronger as we move on. So um, yeah, I think that's really all I have. So if I uh, turn it back over to you guys and if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them from this point on. Thank you, Heather, for sharing your story with us. I know I have a million questions that I want to ask, but I'm not going to do that. So now it's the time for the Q&A portion where you all get to ask your questions. 
use the Q&A functionality that's at the bottom of your home screen and submit your questions that way. But I, I will start with the question. So Heather, I know you moved from Dallas and you, you know, kind of transitioned a little bit. What was unique about starting your business here in Tulsa? I think probably the community. I mean, I have been really impressed with, especially the Tulsa Chamber and the Tulsa Small Business Connection. I, I was brought in um, by my good friend, Amy Bates, if you're out there, she kind of drug me into the Small Business Connection and it's really been such a blessing. I've met so many wonderful um, business owners that, and you know, everybody in the organization as well, just really helped me along the way. I have had more speaking opportunities through the chamber than I, I can count. And it's, it's just helped me grow as an agency and the community here in Tulsa. And that's one thing that I didn't get to go back to when I said I came kicking and screaming to Tulsa. <laughs> but what I have um, found is that the people here are so fantastic. And we really have a cool city. You know, when the, um, the BOK came along and then Guthrie Green, I am in love with Tulsa now. And honestly, I wouldn't go back to Dallas if, if I had the opportunity. It's, it's really gotten too big for me, believe it or not. Big city girl, and now the city's too big. But Tulsa, just the small business community, the chamber, the small business connection, just a fabulous group of people. And we are all just constantly just lifting each other up and supporting each other's businesses. And I just can't imagine a better place to do business. So another question, going back to your influencer journey, was there ever a time during your influencer journey that you wanted to give up? And if you had, what would you have missed out on? I think what, uh, yes, is, is the answer. And, you know, especially when you're my age and you're, you're on kind of what I consider a younger platform and all these kids are going, what is your mom doing? Why is she doing this? And, um, I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm not a very shy person, but that, that did kind of mess with me a little bit. And, um, and it's hard. And that's the one thing I've learned that the, these influencers really deserve whatever they're asking you for. It, it's a hard deal. So I'm basically working all day and I'm influencing at night. So I'm kind of getting to where I'm working about, you know, 12 to 14 hour days. Sometimes it's a lot of work. I now have a website that um, for my Just Me Heather B that um, I have to constantly manage my website and put up new recipes and ideas for followers because followers are a lot of work. They have a lot of questions. And so it, it's, a, um, it's a struggle, but I'm sticking with it. Said I was going to give it a year and it'll be a year in February, but I think I'll probably continue it after that. So as you've gone through you know, the journey and, and a few of the struggles, what keeps you inspired? What keeps you motivated? Is it the followers? Is it their questions? I think it's, like I said before, I think it's, it's become sort of a mission. And I, I love that I can help other people with a dinner idea or an entertaining idea or, a, you know, a cheap and expensive way to, you know, decorate your home without spending a fortune. So though it just it makes me feel really good knowing that I've helped somebody. Maybe that's, you know, initially I wanted to be a nurse and I chose marketing. And so maybe it's just the, the nursing gene in me that I never got to experience. I just, I feel like I'm sort of a caregiver and it makes me feel good to um, help other people. Well, that's a fun fact to know. I don't think many of us knew that. What is your single biggest challenge owning your business? I would say, and I'll be honest with you, I am, I always say I'm the world's worst boss. Um, and I say that because I'm a little bit of a pushover. <laughs> and my, I have great employees, don't get me wrong, they're fantastic and they probably wouldn't say I'm a bad boss, but um, I think managing people is hard. And I'm, again, I'm a caregiver and I, I just want everybody to be happy and feel feel happy and that they're taken care of. And that's a struggle sometimes because I do feel there's been times that I've kind of been taken advantage of in that situation. And um, 
it's, it's hard for me. I mean, I've really, I'm, I'm a member of another organization called CEO Stars, and it's a group of ad agencies across the country. And we get together once a month and we, we talk about um, what we're doing on the inside. And many of them uh, in several instances have said, you know, you, you got to put your foot down, you've got to do this. And so that's, and it's still tough for me, even I, I know what I need to be doing as a business owner from an employee standpoint, but sometimes that's, that's been a struggle for me. Now, I will say, um, since COVID and everyone is, and everyone's still working at home, I did have to make some staff changes when COVID hit, unfortunately, but I'm still um, using some on freelance basis and, um, but it's working out great for now. We will definitely make some changes in 2021. I'm hoping COVID is over. Everybody can come back and um, we can, you know, just kind of see where things go from there. But I'm a little bit happier <laughs> not having to just really manage people on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't like putting my thumb on people. I don't like making sure they show up for work on time and they're only gone for an hour. I mean, it's just our world is changing. And I think COVID has really opened all of our eyes from a business standpoint that maybe work doesn't occur eight to five. Maybe work doesn't just have to occur underneath my building here at Chatter Marketing. Um, so I'm a little happier right now and I think they are too. And I don't know, we'll just see what 2021 brings and we're just gonna, it's a day by day thing. And if it'll, it'll work until it doesn't is what I say. Going back to social media. So for companies that want to tackle the social media space, where do you think they need to start? Of course, you wanna start with the bigs, you know, um, Facebook and depending on your, your business, for example, Instagram or Pinterest is not right for every business. You really need to look at your business or you B2C or you B2B. And then um, we will kind of give a recommendation and, or, you know, I can help give some advice on where you think you should start. But Facebook is course number one, you probably need to be there. And if you're B2B, LinkedIn is another great option for you. If you have a retail um, business, you're gonna wanna probably on, be on Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, I have my own thoughts on Twitter, but um, we use it. We just don't use it a ton, so. On the different platforms, uh, we have a member asking, is Parler a good place to start as well? I have just become familiar with Parler, and if you're a conservative, it is a fantastic place to be. Um, we are not using Parler currently. It's a pretty new platform. Um, but I am very sure that that's going to become the next big, you know, the, all the controversy surrounding this election. Um, if you have a B2B business and for sure, and especially in Oklahoma, where uh, we're mostly a red state and you maybe want to target people in Oklahoma um, targets, probably if that platform is growing by leaps and bounds. So I, I imagine within the next few years, especially if things don't change um, from a, a social media, um, Facebook, Instagram platform. Like if people don't feel like they can trust the platforms the way they used to, then I can see that there's gonna be some new players in the game. So yeah, keep your eyes open for that. This actually rolls in really well with the question that came in. What are the biggest mistakes you see people make with social media? Hmm, I would say right now, um, careful what you say on social media, even as a, as a business owner on your personal accounts about politics and opinions and arguments. I would say that's probably the, the biggest mistake you can make. Don't feel like just because you're on your personal platform that your customers aren't, aren't noticing. So just be very careful, be respectful of other people. Not everybody has to think the way that you do. Um, and, you know, I believe me, I'm through this political journey that we're all in right now, I have my own ideas and feelings in my head and I would love to scream it from the mountaintops, but I, I will not do that. Um, second thing that I would say is, say on your social media, you have a customer that goes on and gives you a negative review or um, complains you know, to your whole audience or on their audience and they tag you in it. The 
the best piece of advice I can give you there is number one, don't argue with them ever. You, you respond though, but you, you respond in a very professional way. You know, if, say they go on and give you a one star review for something bad that happened and you know, they felt wronged in some way. You go on there and you respond. I'm so sorry that um, you, with this experience that you've had with our business, please give us a call. We'd really like to hear more about it and um, how can we make this better? So really it's not the back and forth that people want to see. Your potential new customers that are reading those reviews want to see how you handled it. So as long as you're handling it in a professional manner, that's really what's important. It's okay to get a bad review. Everybody gets them. And honestly, if you have all five-star reviews um, on Facebook, nobody believes them anyway. They think that they're planted. So a, a bad review every now and then is great. And also you need to respond to every review and comment that makes sure someone is managing your social media to respond to everything that's coming through. And when you work with someone, if you hire someone else to do it, um, when you work with them long enough, they learn how to speak in your voice. And over time, you can kind of let them go and do that. And they kind of know the canned responses or, or how they think you as the client, if they know you well enough, would, would respond. Um, but if you don't have somebody managing that for you, you need to make sure that you are going and responding to every single thing that is put out there. Like it, heart it, um, thanks for your comments or you know whatever it is they know that you're listening to them. It's a social platform. That's what it was meant for. It's not meant for just throwing up a happy Friday with a picture of a funny cat. I mean, it's, it is a platform. Facebook, Instagram, Google, I mean, not Google, but Facebook and Instagram want us to interact with each other on social media. And that, that's what it's for, so. Okay, let's switch to just me, Heather B. Can you influence us quickly? Tell us what are <laughs> your top... And the most important things to have when hosting a holiday party? Oh gosh, I would say, um, of course I love to cook. So we, we just have, we have a dinner group, for example, that we've all been together for about 20 years. And I just hosted a, a Halloween party for my dinner group. I think it's important to have everybody sit down together. So I always make sure that I have a pretty table and um, that it's fun and it's festive. And um, for our dinner group, the, the host makes the main meal and everybody else brings sides. So just coordinating, uh, making sure that the sides go with, with whatever is the main meal and that it's got a theme, but don't overwhelm yourself. Um, just you know, plan ahead, keep it simple, um, but rememberable for your, for your guests. That's a good reminder to not overwhelm yourself. Don't overwhelm yourself. Oprah has her favorite things list. So what would be your three on your favorite things? I have to go probably to my kitchen. And I would probably say, <laughs> um, gosh, you're going to make me look silly here for a second. But um, I got a new Vidalia onion chopper. <laughs> it's really cool. Easiest tool ever. If you need to chop an onion, it does it in one whack. I would say that's a good one. Um, I also have, for entertaining, I just got um, something that I love. I use it for every party. It's like a wine um, ice mold. And you can put pretty flowers down in it and make the most beautiful um, molds that you can plop a wine bottle into afterwards. So that one's um, really great. Guy, you put me on the spot here. So... Uh, I would say probably my KitchenAid kitchen mixer is I use it all the time. I'm not a big baker. I don't really like to bake, but I like to cook if that makes sense. So, um, but I love that thing and, you know, a good food processor. Yes, for sure. You got to have that. I'm all about making life easier. I'm a working mom, wife, and I, you know, if I'm going to come home and cook every night, I need to make it really simple and easy and a lot of the tools that I have, but if you go to my website, justmeheatherb.com and go to favorites, all my favorites are listed there for the house, the kitchen, clothing, and all kinds of things, so. Thank you for sharing three of them at least or five with us. <laughs> and thank you so much again for sharing your story with us and, and answering our, our questions that came through the chat. 
A few, uh, uh, actually a few updates that I also want to bring to your attention. Small Business Saturday is quickly approaching. And so I wanna remind everyone that you can register your business for Tulsa Safely Partnership. It's again, the Tulsa Safely Partnership. Tulsa Safely is an effort to raise awareness of the health and safety precautions taken by local businesses and Tulsa Safely Partners. Uh, they commit to adhere to the Tulsa Health Department's workplace gui guidance for COVID-19. In return, partners will be listed as a Tulsa Safely business and receive window signage. You can register your business at tulsasafely.com. Again, that's tulsasafely.com. You can also view all of the Chamber's upcoming events on tulsachamber.com slash events. Again, that's tulsachamber.com slash events. And I want to just thank our generous sponsors again and Heather for her wonderful time today and her wonderful story. Feel free to reach out to any of your chamber contacts should you have any questions. But in the meantime, have a wonderful rest of your day.